Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special ask from the Bulletproof Brothers. We have a secret handshake to be in the Bulletproof Club, the Bulletproof Brotherhood. Now, you don't have to be a guy to be in the Brotherhood. You can be a lady. It's open to everybody. But what you need to do is you need to click subscribe. That's all we ask. We toil week in, week out. We work for you. And the only payment we ask, that handshake of trust, is you clicking the subscribe button. Become a subscriber and join the Bulletproof Brotherhood. <laughs> well played. My goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I'm JT and I'm here with the furious Joe Worthington. What's up, guys? How you living? Oh, yeah. And now, it, this is interesting because often I come with an impassioned idea or a topic. I'm like, Joe, we have to address X, Y, and Z. But this morning, it is Joe Worthington who has brought us um, maybe a topic of contention, something which needs to be talked about. He's got to get it off his chest, and we need to air it out because this is maybe a topic that can be confusing for people, and... We need to talk about why we prioritize what we do and how we think about it. Joe, let us know what it is. Thank you. Thank you for that, that fine introduction. Uh, so the, I guess the thing is what we're trying to do for, for y'all, right, for the listeners, is we're trying to like empower you guys to understand your physical development better. We're trying to give you tools to make you stronger, make you more flexible. And, you know, the tools are this education, these discussions, we have our program, we do our YouTube, like it's all this stuff that we put out there in the hope that you will absorb some, right? Or if not or, you know, as much of it as you can, and that will make you a better human, better on the mats and better in life. And so, you know, with that comes the need to talk about certain aspects of physical development and just kind of give context to them. Now, the uh, the fury that JT refers to, yeah, it's, it's not quite fury, it's more... Um, it's more, I had a little bit of a, of, of a bee in my bonnet, so to speak, uh, after an exchange I had with someone on social media who I actually really like, someone who, who also puts content out. Respectable person. Absolutely. They put great content out for, for the jiu-jitsu community, strength, flexibility, conditioning, all that kind of stuff, very similar to us. And uh, they put out a really cool post and, and, and I was commenting on some stuff and we had a back and forth and... The, it, it, it didn't go the way I wanted it to because I was trying to make a point and um, you might know if you've listened to this show for a while, I'm quite precise about the points that I try to make and if the person that I'm making the point to can't sort of stay on that point, then I'm like, well, then we've got problems. Right? Joe's, Joe's annoyed. Yeah, it's like we're here for a thing. Let's keep it on. Let's stay on the thing. <laughs> stay on point, son. Anyway, so so I kind of tried. To, I, I start. I initiated the discussion, and and you know. So what was the discussion around? So the discussion was around. Um, I, I I can't remember the specifics of what they had said in their post, but their point alluded to being that strength was more important than mobility. Oh, what? Yeah, and I excuse me, and I was like. Tell me more about that. Like, why do you say that, right? There's all the other shit they say. I was like, yeah, bang on. It was something in, along those lines. And um, their response was that strength as an attribute can be for an untrained individual. So if we take like a beginner and we start doing some strength training, we can double that person's strength within, say, a given amount of time. Let's say six to 12 months. Sure. Right. Um, which is true or not, but for the sake of the discussion, let's go with it. Let's say it's true. Uh, versus doubling their or, or getting consistent gains from their flexibility or their mobility, as they termed it, um, will not be possible. And so what they had said was like after, after a few weeks or, or at best months, you'll stop getting mobility gains, whereas you will have consistent strength gains over a longer period. And so my response to that was, while I acknowledge that flexibility can be harder to develop as an attribute, yeah, um, it would be your process for developing the flexibility that is flawed. Yeah. And that <laughs> you should really, like, while it's... It's not them. It's you, coach. Yeah. You're like, the problem. Like, while it's not going to be, like, week in, week out, big gains, more weight on the bar, mm. the process might be a bit longer, but... I'm confident that we could take anybody and increase yeah. their range of motion for many, many months, oh. if not years. 
I totally agree. I would actually argue, in my opinion, depending on the individual, because especially if they're not trained, they're, we're going to assume that they're healthy but not in shape, that you can improve somebody's flexibility or mobility, depending on how you want to turn it, just as much, if not more, than strength. It just depends on how you train it and how you progress it, right? It's this system of being able to take somebody from can't touch their toes to can put their head against their toe, right? Yeah. So I think, sorry, continue. Yeah. So, you know, so, so on, so, you know, that, that point I thought, well, that to me sounds extremely defeatist. Yes. Because for someone who's in the community, who's maybe like, fuck, I wish I was more flexible. Reading that, they're going to go, oh, well, this coach said that you can't actually get more flexible after a month or so anyway. So why bother? Mm. So I, it was important to me to just kind of pick, to be like, hey, I don't agree with that um, because I don't agree with that, right? And, I want, and yeah. I want people to know like, no, you should totally work on flexibility like it's an attribute. So anyway, so I responded with that and I said, well, I would argue that it's your approach to how you develop it. You know, I said, strength is the same thing. If you don't know, if you don't have some kind of process for developing strength, the athlete or the person probably won't get all that much stronger. Mm. But if you have a good process they're going to get stronger. Yeah. The same with flexibility, right? And so then then the point came back, which was, and this is where it went off track a little bit. And so I, I actually didn't bother responding to this because I was like, well, you've moved away from the original you, you point le- now. You left him on red. <laughs> <laughs> Joey has, comments? Joey has <laughs> left the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Notification silenced. <laughs> no, and so I, I said, um, I raised, oh no, and so, the, the, yeah, so I, that was my point. And then um, fella came back with, look, if I have a novice athlete, I can double their strength within a year. I can't double their range of motion. And I'm like, well, hang on a second. We're trying to compare two sort of different different attributes of physical development here. Mm. And who says that one is equivalent, like one unit of one is equivalent to one unit of of the the other, other, right? Like I probably can't double your speed either, or I can't double your power. Maybe I can increase it to, to some degree of magnitude, yes. but I can't double it, right? Because if I could double your speed, well, then theoretically in two years' time, I could your speed could be more than tripled. It would be three, three and a half X what it is now. Yeah, but that's, not, so, that's yeah, not how it works. It doesn't work like that. And it also made me think like that's also an oversimplification of strength because sure, while I may be able to take you from a 70 kilo deadlift to 140 kilos in 12 months you're not actually going to be two times as strong on the mats as you were back then. Yes. Like it's, it's very specific stuff we're dealing with here. It is. And, and athletic development is so much more complex than that, right? Because you could – so this is just case in point how there's an interplay between mobility and strength. Just quickly, bear with me. If someone has really terrible ankles, right, their squat will be terrible. Like they won't be able to get as deep in the squat. If you can improve someone's ankle range of motion, like their mobility, flexibility in their ankle, just by like 10%, 20%, that will dramatically improve the depth in their squat if that's the limiting factor. So then you've got someone squatting ass the grass, which means that unlocks the squat from just being a 90 degree range of motion squat. Now, it's hard to compare how strong you are if you squat. Like if someone can squat a certain weight at ass the grass, arguably greater range of motion that's a that's a bigger squat right then, even then, though, a, then someone who's got a shitty shallow squat yeah they, they, they the can move a lot of weight, weight to to less range so just by increasing the range of motion with that person's ankle you've unlocked this strength movement and there is this interplay right absolutely so you don't necessarily have to double an athlete's mobility you know there, there is this interplay that if you can make an athlete more mobile in certain places if they lack range that that can make them stronger so yeah why would you they just, are not exclusive they're not exclusive so why would you just go i'll just do x yeah and so what i think what like what, touching on what you just said about like the ankle range of motion and using the squat as an example the and this is where i think strength and conditioning as a field of uh, athletic development and not all, but but generally speaking, it probably lacks, in my opinion, mm. it lacks this metric of quality. Nuance. Well, yeah, like specifically the quality of that movement. Mm. So I might 
be able to take an, uh, an uh, I don't want to say athlete, I might be able to take a jiu-jitsu practitioner who has a dog shit 80 kilogram back squat and let's say within six to 12 months, they've still got an 80 kilo back squat, but it's beautiful. Yes. Technique is clean. I see that the, the ankles are very comfortable with the range. Yep. Knees are tracking well. Bar speed is good. Yeah, bar speed is good. The spine's in a good position. By the conventional strength and conditioning sort of through that lens, there's been no progress there. Whereas from a movement lens, man, your f- squat went from dog shit to awesome. Yes. And now that the handbrake is off, we can dial up this intensity and we right. can build you a heavier squat. And I think that that's where – so in that way, it's like I think the quality of movements is something that needs to be given more um, – just more airtime. And I think for like for people listening to this, it's like, you know, you might be following our standards program or you might be in the gym doing the thing and you don't only want to just look for more weight on the bar no. or heavier kettlebell, whatever. You want to look for a movement that is actually, it's it's smoother, it's more aesthetically pleasing. You're like, fuck, that looks, I can see more quality there. Control. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I think, you think it wouldn't be separate, right? But the person you were talking to is a kind of peak performance Performance is a thing, right? But a lot of what we talk about is what's sustainable and what is optimal. And you know, this is what I always say to someone is like, if they're they're like, I really want to get strong. And I'm like, you can see somebody strong when they have control. When you see someone do something that looks easy, because it just looks like they're, they're not exerting themselves. They have control. It's very smooth. You're like, wow, they make that look easy. And that, that speaks to quality. That speaks to, and really, even though you might see someone pull big weight on a deadlift and it looks like, fuck, they're hemorrhaging their their discs out of their anus. You're like, oh, good work. Good work with the weight belt and the wrist straps. (laughs) If you can track hard enough, Joe, anything's possible. (laughs) But you know, like David anus. (laughs) (laughs) I'll see you at Planet Cock. (laughs) If you don't know what we're talking about, go to our Hot Ones episode. It's out now. You'll, you'll know what's up. You'll get the reference. But no, essentially, um, when you do see people exhibiting great control, and there's almost like a, a finesse to it, that indicates strength. It also indicates mobility too. So do we want to talk a little bit about, because maybe, maybe the confusion here between you and our, our, our friend is that their understanding of mobility and flexibility is limited. And therefore, yeah, that's yeah. why they're, they're struggling with helping their clients with it, maybe. Yeah. And yeah, and I mean, look, yeah, obviously, like, I'm not even trying to project, uh, you know, what, how they go with this when they're, like, they're probably doing great flexibility, mobility stuff in their gym, like, all that, you know, or in their, in their coaching. It's more just, like, philosophically kind of looking at these things. Yeah, let's talk about the definition of the two. So, here's what you hear in fitness. And we have said this, and I've believed this for the longest time. And what I'm about to say doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to change the way I speak about it yes. because the way we speak about it is intentional so that folks like y'all can understand, Yep. right? But so typically in fitness, flexibility is thought of as r- passive range of motion and then mobility is thought of as active range of motion. So that means uh, a range of motion in a joint that you can do while under some load, right? So let's say like, um, if I'm just lying on my back and someone grabs my leg and lifts it up with a straight leg to see how far my hamstrings can stretch versus me standing on the ground on one leg and actively lifting that leg. So when I lift it, my hip flexors, my quads, my abs have to work. The hamstring has to stretch while it's under some load. So there's more at play here. Now, I think as a working definition, this is convenient for people to understand. And I think that where this probably gets a little bit over um over analyzed is this whole pushback that there's been over the last sort of few decades where like stretching makes you weak or stretch or like you know whatever flexibility is making you weak it's a waste of of time yeah so referencing flexibility research you can check them out on instagram i'll just shout out shout a great account uh what's their i'm just going to give their actual account sorry just fucking people sliding in my dms you know what's up (laughs) Um, sorry, I can't talk. Well, to I think right that now. here's the thing that uh, ultimately, when, I mean, even for myself, when I'm trying to think about what I'm doing, I, I have started doing more loaded flexibility work. So you could say that is mobility, right? 
but it's just taking a position and then putting some load in there to increase the, the challenge at the end range. Yeah, there's there's more input now. Yeah. yeah. And, and you can do that. Once and that you, input is more similar to, to what you're facing on the mat. And, and this is, I'll just quickly throw back to, we, we'd had a discussion about um, the standards program. And so when you start in our standards program, at the start, there is mobility work. But when you get better at it, it becomes hard. <laughs> like, it's no longer like, oh, I'm just doing a bit of a warm-up thing. It's like, no, you got to do, you know, three sets of skin the cat. Yeah. It's like, that's... Well, hang on a second. That's just using some strength. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. But you're going through a really full range of motion with load. That's taxing. It's, there's a point at which it becomes a strength exercise. You know, I mean, it, it's... We're not trying to confuse you here. It's just understand that there is levels to this game. Because, you know, some people would struggle to touch their toes and then you've got people doing Jefferson curls with like 60 kilos. It's, it's pretty much the same movement. One is not the same as the other. Yeah. So what do we got here, Joe? So uh, referencing here, Flexibility Research. You can find them on Instagram, flexibility.research. Really great account on all things flexibility related. Very science driven. Probably going to be pretty disinteresting to the majority of people listening right now. Well, if but, you want to know. If you do geek out on this stuff a little bit, check them out. But they actually did a post sometime, as back in November, talking about how mobility, uh, when used in the scientific literature, actually just refers to someone being able to walk around or being able to eat or dress themselves. It, it's, it means like actually just mobility. Can you get from point A to point B or do these tasks? Flexibility is range of motion. And we have multiple different kinds of flexibility that cover all of those different... Um, active, or, passive. Exactly. Active, passive, dynamic, static. Um, it, it goes on, right? It goes deeper. Talking on that book, uh, Stretching Scientifically, that we yes. looked at before, like that covers it all if anyone really wants to geek out. But, but basically what he's saying there is like mobility actually doesn't exist. This, this definition that we use of, oh, it's flexibility while under load, is like that's just flexibility. It just happens to be dynamic and it's more loaded sure. than, you know, you holding a static stretch. In any case, what I think is important about this is when we look at a strength exercise, so let's say we take the back squat as an example and we have someone like JT and I have someone here in the gym and they've got a terrible back squat because their ankles are tight and their hips are a bit tight. So we're... We might have them back squat, but we're going to have them really work hard to stay in a good position, get to the bottom of their range of motion, whatever that is for them before they start to fall apart technique wise. And then maybe we're going to have them like pause for a couple of seconds and then back out. And we're going to do that for reps, right? Now we're going to use that exercise as a way to increase their range of motion. Mm. So arguably the back squat is a stretch. It is a, it is a dynamic... How how dare know. you, Joe Worthington? Right? <laughs> You've offended everybody All right the fucking now. Big guys in the room. Power lifters like, yeah. fuck you, I am not yeah. stretching, I'm lifting, bro. <laughs> exactly, right? So that becomes a dynamic active stretch, right? True. Versus when we go, hey man, today we're going for your three RM. I want you to fucking do your warm-up sets, and then I want as much weight as you can get on the bar. Stay in a safe range. Let's get some big numbers. Now we're doing, this is a strength exercise. Right. So it's contextual. Sure. Right. How you approach it is contextual. The same exercise can be flexibility or it can be more biased towards strength. Now, even if it's biased towards strength, there's an element of flexibility and vice versa. Sure. So I think in that way, the two qualities shouldn't be considered as mutually exclusive. No. Right. It shouldn't be like, nah, fuck that. I don't fuck with flexibility. I just do strength training. And you know what? Sometimes I train to end range. Well, that's flexibility, my friend. That's, <laughs> yes. You're just choosing to do the dynamic active type. Sure. And that's real cool. Like I'm super down with that. Mm. So I think it's important like um, to not separate them as attributes. Yeah. And when we look at what we offer in say in our programming, we include it in all of our strength work. Plus we also give some more flexibility biased training routines. We do. And we've even prescribed like some just static stretching before because yeah. guess what? Static stretching like fucking works. And if you're doing it in conjunction with strength biased training yeah. and, you know, done it, like you're going to be, it. yeah, like a little bit of everything pushes the needle the most. Definitely. And look, this is where I'd say like having, so Joe was recounting this discussion 
with more passion this morning before the pod. And this is what we always do. We, we, we have our discussions and plans before we get on here. And because there was heaps of chili sauce on the wrap that I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> Spitting hot fire. She got me fired up, man. <laughs> and, um, but look, I, I think the mistake that we make as coaches is we're like, yo, this is what I can do for you. And I'm good at X. And really, it's not about that. It's really about what that person needs the most. And sometimes what a person needs isn't necessarily what you really want to give them, if that makes sense. So even though you're like, yeah, I really want to make this person ultra strong, the best thing you might do for them is teach them something about hydration or teach them a bit of a warm-up routine. And actually, that's what moves the needle for them. And it's got nothing to do with what you expect or what your ego as a coach wants to impose upon the person. So having heard that discussion that you had, Joe, I was like, well, look, you know, sure, we all want to make our athletes stronger because that's going to make our athletes talk about us and be like, yeah, so-and-so got me so strong and yeah, I'm so jack now and ego stroke this, that, the other because yeah, that's fucking great for Instagram. Most athletes aren't going to post the them struggling to stretch their calf like <laughs> oh my calf because that looks like a little bitch move right but that could be the work that could be the hardest thing you have to do that day now it's not sexy and it's not big and you're not going to post it on instagram here's my client improving their ankle range of motion oh you're not going to post that right so i think there's this ego competition in our mind about what we do and how we see ourselves as these coaches and then the good we can do for people. And I honestly believe one of the best things you can do for, you know, everyday person, some dude in his 30s, got a job, just trying to get to jujitsu. I actually think from an injury point of view, it's equally weighted. And if they are already a bit inflexible and already lacking range of motion, before you add load, you should add range. And I learned that from someone way smarter than me. You shouldn't be loading someone up who doesn't already have a healthy range of motion. And if we're talking about you out there, the listener, most people don't have healthy range of motion. So in my opinion, when I get somebody, I'm like, well, let's just, let's just get you functioning well before we think about this peak performance type thing. That's my take on it. Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. The, you know, the, I think where it gets, tricky for folks is you know you look at someone let's you know take take gordon ryan he said before like you know he can't he can't lift his arms up anywhere near Pecs above his too head. tight he's too busy flex yeah right like he can't you know and it's and it's funny right he's like fuck i can't even lift my arms up over my head um he is at the absolute peak of the game in terms of physical athleticism he has what it takes to to be there right and, and of course, people have said he's not actually that athletic. It's, it's, and he said it's isometric strength combined with good technique and strategy, you know, in a sense. Um, and Diana Ball. But, right? <laughs> All the fucking balls. <laughs> but, it's not, but that is not a recipe for a healthy life. No. And this is, this is where looking at the elites in your sport, in any sport, can become misleading for the general practitioner because you're like, well, fuck, I want to do that. Okay, do Gordon's passing routine. Do Gordon, like, get his leg lock. Get his skills. Do the techniques. But don't follow his physical development stuff because to play at that level, you pay a price. And the price is you're going to have 10 years of glory and then you're going to be pretty fucking busted up for the rest of your life. Absolutely any athlete that's playing at the top level of anything can tell you that. Mm. Whether it's athletics, whether it's ball sports, track, you know, track, whatever, it's like you've got to pay a price to be at that level. There is also an element of specificity in the development whereby it doesn't make any sense for someone at that level to work on anything other than what's going to push the needle for them to win the next competition. Yeah. But that is also, that is obviously closing, that is not looking at, well, how are you going to live from the age of 37 until whenever you die? Like, what's the quality of that going to be like? So the, for the majority of jiu-jitsu people, sure, some of you listening are going to be like, nah, fuck that, I want to be the next Gordon. And you should definitely chase that, right? Put all your energy into that. But for those of you who are like, you know what, man, jits for me is a, it's a, it's a part of my life. I also like want to be able to like do that recreational sport on the weekend, or I'm planning on having a family one day, or you know whatever. It's like, well, you probably want to look after yourself a little bit so that you can play the game, but you can also do all the other shit and not be in pain for the next forty years. Yeah, I mean, I look at my parents, right, and they, 
they don't really look after themselves. They still do stuff. They're active. Uh, my mum's 75. My dad's 80. Uh, and that's cool. Like, they're, they're very capable, but they're losing their capability because they haven't invested in. I mean, my dad used to lift. He used to run. He used to all that. But it's kind of gone out the door. And now's the time, really. If you can't lean, like, and you probably all know this feeling, because I had this feeling multiple times, where you've had a really hard jit session the night before you wake up the next day, and you go to do the thing where you go to put your shoe on, but because your, your hip flex is tight and your back sore, you go like, ah, oh, I'm going to have to sit down to put sit my shoes down, on. Sit down, put your shoe on. But I'll sit on That's, the floor because I'm mobile. Yeah, oh, real yeah, mobile. And, the then, and then you, you got to do technical stand-up to get yeah. up. That's old man shit. Yeah. You don't need that. You shouldn't. We should not be prematurely aging ourselves in the name of some ego stroke that no one cares about. Like, it's that simple. So my, my advice, it wouldn't matter if I'm training a world champion or I'm training a regular person, health is the foundation for performance. If your, if your health foundation is short, you can only build so high. The broader your health, the deeper the roots on your health, the taller the tree can grow. Mm. So... Why would you not build a broader base if you're trying to really reach as high as you can? That's my take on it. Yeah. And look, if you're trying to think about like, how do I, how do I approach my training with this in mind? Yes. Something that I think is important is actually makes me think about our discussion when you're eating your breakfast this morning. So here's what JT does. <laughs> he, so JT will take his food, the plate of food comes and he will meticulously cut everything on the plate up into small sort of mini bite-sized pieces. Do you want to, shall we also do the calorie count and the contents of the Some, food, Joe? No, we don't have to go there. Okay, I'm not right. naming names. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but, so the, but so the reason, he, and sometimes you'll leave it like that, but basically it's like preparation phase and then it's like eating phase. But what you did today was you mixed it all into like a salad of sorts <laughs> and then ate it. And I asked you why and you're like, well, it's so I get an equal amount of everything in every bite. This is interesting, right? Sometimes in our training... We should be trying to get a bit of everything. Should be getting a bit of flexibility. Should be getting a bit of strength, a bit of conditioning, a bit of jiu-jitsu, whatever. But if we look at the fact that you're training all the time and this goes on for many years, you don't necessarily have to have every single thing on the plate uh, all the time. You might go, hey, for the next three or six months, I'm just zeroing in on strength. I'm not really focusing on my flexibility. I'm just getting hench as fuck. Sure. And it's cool. You're doing your heavy barbell work. You're following Strength 101, you know, one of our programs. You, you're just doing that. And then you might go, fuck, you know what? Next season or this summer, whatever, I'm going to keep doing some strength work, but I'm actually going to focus. I'm going to bias more towards my flexibility. I want to start working on Cossack squad and my back bend. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be everything, right? JT. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is this the dimension? <laughs> yeah. What's happening right now? But I, I think that's really important. So like, you know, we've said this before. If you're the kind of person that if you look back and go, yeah, I just bias towards strength all the time. Yeah. Then it's probably going to make sense for you to bias towards flexibility for like six to 12 months because that's the shit that's going to be real hard and that's what's going to push the needle for you. And that's probably going to unlock more strength potential than if you just kept doing the same strength work for the next 12 months. And, 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 I, yeah. and vice versa, if you're the person that just stretches all the time, Go lift some fucking weights, please. Exactly. And I think the interesting thing about this, which you can't know right now, is you don't, like, the, you know, the saying is you don't know what you got till it's gone. You also don't know what you don't have until you get it. And then when you get it, you're like, wow, this is great. Whoa, I, I, I'm not my back, you know, this person's stacking me, my back doesn't hurt. Or a person tried to pass my guard, I just inverted. I feel good, I didn't jack my own neck up. It's like, wow, it just unlocks jujitsu. I think... The thing that we underestimate is how crazy this thing is that we do. It's so complicated and it's so demanding. And if you've gotten used to having a shitty range of motion, you just you just accept it. Yeah, like, you live in your body every day. Yeah, it's just, just normal for you. Yeah, but then once you get new range of motion, you're like, oh my God, I can move my hand up and my shoulder doesn't hurt, my back doesn't hurt. And then suddenly just, you know, movements that you never thought you could do, you can now do. And jujitsu is renewed. That's right. You know, I think the hardest thing... Kind of like finding God for the first time. Oh, wow. I just, <laughs> Joey shone down on me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> said, May, you mobility. are not ready. <laughs> May mobility be with you, my son. <laughs> Touch, he touched me on the hamstring. Try harder. I could put my foot behind my head. It was amazing. <laughs> um, 
No, I think one of the things is that ultimately we will be less athletic as we get older. But mm. the better we look after ourselves, the longer we can keep our capacity. And you want to feel energetic and good and, and healthy. And now if we look at the extreme case of a power lifter, they are more or less the strongest humans on the planet. They lift the most weight. But when you look at them, they're not the healthiest individuals and they move like bricks, right? In the same way, if... Saw your boy Hunt Powerlifting work in his side split the other day. Oh, he's and doing it. looks it. good. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this is what I like to see. Yeah, yeah. He's going that Juju Mufu route. Motherfucker right? can lift hundreds of kilograms and, and also work a side split. split. Yeah, he's very capable. Uh, yeah, exceptional. Outlier. Yeah, very, very few have that. But it's possible, right? It proves that it's possible. Yeah. That you can be one of the strongest people in the world and also be very flexible. But then you, you've got people who are like, oh, I, I just... I just stretch like I just I love the feeling of just you know just being able to move my body and that's it but if you said all right well we've got some sacks of concrete can you just carry them around the front of the house oh no no I've got to go to Pilates I've got I pay someone to do that for me what is your capability your capability is fuck all there is very there, it is very attainable to find the middle path you can be a really strong person and also be really mobile and healthy but it takes work, right? Yeah. And we've got to give each thing its respective due. So if you thought you're really stiff, then maybe you're neglecting something. In the same way, if you feel quite weak or in pain in certain things, then maybe you're neglecting strengthening that. Here is the really awesome news. Both boats will rise, like both boats rise with the tide. If you improve your mobility, you will have greater opportunity to improve your strength. Same thing, if you improve your strength through a full range of motion you're going to stay flexible too right yeah so they, they they do help each other guys so it's not exclusive but you do have to have a hard look and go where am i lacking and address it hope that helps would love like for those of you listening on the youtube would love any comments on this would love to know what you guys think about this and and sort of definitions of it. i know there's going to be some coaches listening to this who are like I fucking disagree with that or Fuck you know these guys but yeah like ask pick it apart it'd be it'd be good to have the discussion always down for it um and of course if you want help with specific strength and flexibility work for jiu-jitsu go to bulletproof for bjj.com take a free trial of our program and hopefully you stick around for many years and get flexible and strong as fuck yeah thanks fam we'll see you next week